Hello, and welcome to the Neighborhood Well. I am your host, Paul Godola, on WEHC 90.7, your college and community radio station. Today on our show, our guest is Chelsea Green. She is the founder of IT, the Mindfulness Movement. Chelsea, welcome to the Neighborhood Well. Thanks, Paul. I'm glad che to be here. Thank you. Chelsea, it's an honor to have you here today. And why don't we start out, just tell us a little bit about exactly what is IT, the Mindfulness Movement. And you can roll right into, if you want, how you got to uh, to the place where you started it. Yeah, okay. Well, those stories kind of go together. Uh, the the name It came to me. Um, that's one of those, you know, whether you're going to sleep or you're waking up, you don't know. It was just kind of a... Um, in the middle of consciousness moment. <laughs> And so I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, but I just knew I liked that image, and that one word. So that may have been two years ago. In the meantime, I was working on getting my meditation certification, and I started teaching yoga and meditation out in the community. And so I thought, well, okay, maybe this could be it. I really work to build a social platform, so I'm on Instagram and Facebook and I'm writing on there daily, I'm just sharing my story and and kind of what mindfulness and meditation and these yoga practices have done for me in my life. So Chelsea, you, you've already thrown out a lot of words that people, I think, maybe have misunderstandings about what it means. So maybe if we could just kind of go through a few of these. Um, you know, we don't need to spend a lot of time on them necessarily, each of them, but just meditation. Tell us a little bit about meditation and what that means to you and how you how you practice meditation. Yeah. So when I heard that I could be a meditation instructor, I was actually talking to a licensed counselor, and um, I, I found out that she was doing mindfulness-based and, and meditation uh, therapies. So I Skyped with her and wanted to see what she was doing, and uh, when I asked her about her m meditation um, certification, she looked at me in straight face and just said, that's not what's important. You know, ultimately, it comes down to, are you going to practice this and really be um, an active participant in it? And um, you know, I, I took that very, very heavily. It's probably the only thing I remember from the entire talk with her. But so I've, I've tried to make that at the forefront of what I'm doing. Yes, I'm teaching people about meditation, but I'm also living it. So what that looks like for me, and it's changed over the years, and I think it's still changing. But where I'm at with it right now is is that meditation can be done anywhere, doing anything. What it really requires of you is to be there fully. And you know, this could be described as coming into the present moment, coming into whatever the now looks like. So real quick then, you know, thinking about that certification idea and then the, the teacher that you spoke to, correct, she said it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. where you get it. But you know, to some people it does matter. They want to know if they're coming to your class, like why why should I come to Chelsea's class? Mm -hmm. So just, you know, tell us just real quick a little bit about what that certica certification, where, where did it come from? And just if somebody's interested in doing something like that for themselves, right. where would they look into that? Right. Because so, that's kind of the knowledge piece. Like you got to have the knowledge of what it's about. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I got my, th my certification through the uh, American Institute of Healthcare Professionals. I did that because it was a big organization and it had a reputable name. Um, those are what I thought would be most important, considering it really was going to come down to an experience of this. And, and you know, I love how you said that's, that's the, um, the knowledge, the conceptual part of it. But I also should add that um, I, like you, Paul, have been reading a lot of books for a long time, <laughs> listening to a lot of teachers, and um, having a lot of these conversations with people who have similar interests with me. Uh, so for me, the conceptual part of it did not just come from the, the certification process. It comes from life. 
And actually, that's a good lead-in, if you don't mind me going on, into really um, explaining what it, the mindfulness movement, really is to me. Yeah, go right ahead, please. Yeah, so I have, I'm have i back into civilization. I spent a month away in a cabin with a few close few close teachers and I, you know I, I didn't realize until after leaving but I, I really went there to discover I, I you know there was a wanting to get there and find something out you know there was something I was going to find there that was different than what was here already um, and we do this all the time we set ideals you know in the future things are going to be better it might be just five minutes from now but it's just it's just resisting what's right here and so I got there, um, you know, no distractions. So there wasn't my usual vices to get out of distract, you know, to distract myself, to get out of the present. Uh, with time and with the loving guidance of, of my teacher there, I was able to see that really what it is, what it is I'm looking for, is to just fully be in whatever right now looks like and it, we let that go by unnoticed because we have an idea of what it is supposed to look like um, another way of saying that is that we have certain circumstances that we think once our life fits into we will be happy you know the only question i have is how's that going you know and that's for me too how's that going it's like i continued to just resist my real experience um, so it, you know, at its most fundamental sense is, this is it. This is it. Your life right here, right now. Sometimes it's ugly, and sometimes you cry. Uh, there are sometimes I'm seconds away from crying. And fear has that chance to, to pull you away from just feeling what's, what's there. So just to try to clarify here and help people understand this, when, we, when Chelsea... When you're using the word it, mm -hmm. what you're really referring to is, is life, whatever the person, any individual is encountering, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. So yeah. any particular moment you're encountering. So there's going to be uh, uh, something that happens, and we're going to label it ourselves, good or bad. Mm -hmm. And from somebody else's perspective, then, it could be the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. Because so... One of my favorite things to do, and of course I grew up playing sports and I'm familiar with sports, so if my team wins, that's good. Mm -hmm. If my team loses, that's bad. But every time there's a game, there's a winner and a loser, right? So that's like that we've created that expectation. I want to win. But that goes into every single life moment, mm -hmm. right? So that's what, that's what you're looking at there. So <clears throat> within that moment then, how do you... D what happens in your brain or what do you do in your mind that helps you when when you react to a situation when you're ready to cry what do you do next yeah um, this is new ground for me um, but what that month allowed me to do really in the the time that I did have with other people uh, I was in company where it was welcome if I needed to sit and cry at the table. And I, I realized that how, you know, how precious that really is because being back with family, it makes others uncomfortable. Others are afraid, just like you are, to dive right into uh, the fullness of the experience, especially if it's uncomfortable. But what I was realizing with, with these, um, it really was just a source of unconditional love. It was, however I show up today, these people are going to be here and hold this space for me and, and love me and make me feel that this is okay. This is what we all want. You know, we, um, we grew up wanting this from our parents, and our parents are people with fears and with wounds. And they have their own reasons for not being able to, to meet us there the way that we needed them to. If you're just joining us, you're listening to The Neighborhood Well. This is your host, Paul Godola, on WEHC 90.7, your college and community radio station. Today in the studio, we have our special guest, Chelsea Green. And Chelsea is telling us about 
uh, her project, we could call it, It, the Mindfulness Movement, and she's just spent a month away in a, in a cabin uh, with the, and the folks weren't right in the cabin with you, correct? But it was kind of on the property. Right. Tell us real quick where yeah. that's at, and, and can yeah. others ask at oh, uh, for sure. access this place? You go to uh, www.wellbeingretreatcenter.org, and yeah, they've got free retreats every every month for a weekend. The, the two people who are operating it are just incredible. So. Chelsea, one of the things I, I really want to ask you is, so with the idea of the neighborhood well, is that, you know, our, our friends and neighbors like yourself right here in our very own community are doing things on a daily basis that help create a, what I would call a superior wellness or overall, overall wellness. And so in my opinion, everybody can reach an overwhelm or superior wellness, which of course... Uh, those are labels that I've given mm -hmm. to the term wellness. But what I mean by wellness is the collective um, experiences and actions of not only the physical uh, attributes of our lives, so taking care of yourself through, say, exercise. You know, as owner of Iron Mountain CrossFit and uh, Iron Mountain Endurance in, in Damascus, I'm certainly working a lot with people on the physical aspect, mm -hmm. but I know it's much more. So there's the physical aspect, the mental aspect, the emotional aspect, and what I would call the spiritual aspect. And so my question for you is, how do you view that? And then the follow up uh, with it, if you wanna lead right into this, is to me, that's what makes it great, is what makes life great, is that when we combine all those, we share in those experiences of all aspects of that. So just give me a few minutes of your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, so the classes I teach are based in yoga. So right there, we're using the body. What I love about yoga and using the body, even in, in meditation, uh, is, is bringing our awareness, our consciousness, our attention right in to the body. The present moment is the only place that the body can exist. Our mind can take us into the past. Our mind can take us into the future. But the body is this immediate uh, vessel, if you want to call it, for the mind to align itself with the present. Now that is, I think, necessary, that union there, in order to move on to talking about what you refer to as the spiritual um, so the physical and the mental, mm -hmm. right, are necessary for the spiritual, which is just the term I use. Right. right? I would include emotional in, in with the mental, yes. Right. Um, so to you, kind of emotional, mental go together, right? And I think just, emotional, uh, we're getting technical here, but I think I just from my use of it, emotion is something that ties the body with the mind. You know, we can carry emotions in the body and in the mind. I think that's beautiful, though, and that's, that's kind of the thing, because if you think of them individually, that's where sometimes we run into problems. Mm -hmm. If you just take care of the physical, mm -hmm. it's probably not enough. Right. If you just take care of the mental, right. it's probably not enough. So there's something that connects them, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a great way to think of it. It's the emotional. It's, it's, mm -hmm. That's what connects them. Right. Yeah. So then, and then combining, you get into this to the spiritual. Yeah. It's a combination of all those together, correct? Okay. Yeah, the, the spiritual to me is, uh, of course, this is highly subjective. It's, it's unique to everyone's experience. But in my experience, discovering the spiritual aspect of the mental, emotional, physical kind of triad is, um, is that those three aspects kind of rest in and on a sort of space. Okay, they're all changing. That's something they all have in common. As soon as one thought comes, it leaves. As soon as an emotion rises, it's gone. And the body changes second by second. Spirit, though, soul, uh, there, I mean, each religion has its term for it. That is the, the constant space that all of these things are happening in. So, Chelsea, you're an amazing person, um, you know, sharing a lot of things with people through mindfulness movement um, and combining all these. Tell us just a little bit about what else do you do in your life and how that contributes to your overall wellness uh, along the way. Yeah. 
okay, well, so, you know, at, after leaving retreat, I really wanted to bring in a lot of just the, the, the nurturing qualities of that setting. I wanted to bring that back into my life. Um, you know, I, I, as we mentioned, I teach meditation. Meditation, though, is not something I sit down and do every day. But I take time out uh, where distractions can be totally put aside. Phone gone, TV off. You know, the weather has been great recently, and I've just stepped outside and listened to the birds. Um, play with my dog. It's nothing else going on. And, cooking a meal for family members, and that is all that you're doing. That Those, for me, are my spiritual practices every day. Right, so literally every single action is the spiritual practice. You yeah. incorporate it in all aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. And you touched on that earlier. You said that it's anywhere and anything. Mm -hmm. So, Chelsea, what are some of the challenges that you face, uh, you know, along the way, um, in, in, in your quest for and what I, again, call the overall wellness. Yeah. Well, in a broad sense, it's been a real uh, over-identification with my body. Now, the, how that manifested for me was I spent the vast majority of my college years struggling with an eating disorder. Thankfully, I've spent two years in recovery from that. But it's still something I deal with on a daily basis because these thought patterns that come up and for one person, it may be needing to look a particular way. For another person, it may be needing to make a certain amount of money, drive a certain car. Whatever it is that this ideal that we're pushing and striving for, all it is is a, a, a way to keep us from really just being in what is now. And, you know, I say that with the full understanding of how complicated that really is when the mental and emotional and even physical habits counteract that. So you just mentioned that, it, you know, it was a kind of an over-identification with just the body yeah. part. Where does somebody um, start if they have that problem? So, of course, one might be that they need to acknowledge that they have that problem. Right. But where do, where do you start then at? What do you do for yeah. that? Well, for, for me, for sure, it was realizing I had a problem. Um, and how did that come? Like, what helped you realize yeah. that? For me, I, I, would, I know I keep saying for me, but I keep emphasizing this is just my experience. So um, I was listening to uh, a book by Marianne Williamson. Um, I, the name escapes me right now. A Return to Love is what it was. And she talked about her struggle with food. don't necessarily think she had an eating disorder, but she just talked about this monkey on her back this thing that just was weighing her down, it influenced every decision she made, everything she wore, you know, and I could so relate to that mental chatter and, and feeling just that I could not escape it. And um, so she talked about her, her experience of just deciding one day, okay, I'm gonna let that go. I'm just gonna let it go. And it may be ugly for a little while. And I remember hearing that and thinking, Oh my, it is, it could get really, I mean, I, I thought I'm going to gain 30 pounds just out of revenge eating. <laughs> um, you know, but it's been a balance. That's initially what kicked it off, but it's been a balance of, you know, not restricting myself, not trying to control myself, and at the same time, accepting and forgiving myself every time a challenge comes back up. Right, finding that balance is of course to me what this whole show is about is sharing with everybody so you you know you have your strengths and you have your weaknesses and finding that balance is what we're here um, and that's going to contribute to that overall wellness mm -hmm. you know so wellness you're on any um, part of the spectrum so to speak so somebody that is sick in any of those areas physically mentally mm -hmm. emotionally uh, is is not well in that and there, you know, you could have it just like a, a, a gauge, like um, like a, a speedometer, even, right? You know, from mm -hmm. zero to a hundred, it would be any kind of arbitrary number uh, for that. So finding that balance is certainly a key component to it. Chels, tell us a little bit about, or tell us where we can find you through social media and such, and, yeah. and where you're where you're teaching some of your classes. At. Yeah, well, I brought my calendar here in front of me because it's hard <laughs> to keep up with. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm at the Coombe Center in Abingdon. I'm, I'm at your place out in Damascus, Iron Mountain Endurance. And I'm also at Lifestyle Fitness in Bristol. But the best way to keep up with what I'm doing is through my Facebook page. And you can find that, just it. And there's a colon and then the mindfulness movement. Or you can visit it, mindfulnessmovement.com. Keep up with what I'm doing. Today, our guest is Chelsea Green of It, the Mindfulness Movement. She's been sharing her path of awareness and consciousness, and she's a certified meditation instructor. And we've reached kind of the end of the show here where we're going to get into the speed round. Um, Chelsea, before we go, I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, and we'll certainly uh, want to have you back and, and go deeper into these. So a lot of people uh, kind of get excited about the speed round, so we hope you do too here. So on the speed round, we're just going to ask you a few questions, and uh, one, one or two word answers, you can pass on one of the questions. Okay. And so uh, the first question is, what book are you currently reading? It sounds yeah. like you do a lot of reading. So I do a lot of reading, and I have, I have like three going on. But uh, the one that's probably got most of my attention right now is by Krishnamurti. It's the first book I've ever re read of his. Uh, it's called um, Changing, or How to Go About Changing the World Radically, something along the lines of that. And it's taken me quite a bit of time to, to get through. Yeah, definitely an uh, in-depth uh, person there with Krishnamurti. Yeah. Tough to uh, consume some of it yeah. uh, to get wrap your mind around it. What is, you, you mentioned earlier, vices and distractions. Uh -huh. So what is kind of your vice? Uh, let's see. I have many. Um, honestly, it, it, m my phone is the most immediate. And, you know, I absolutely support having a phone, but yeah, that, that is it. Yeah, and of course that's a major problem for, for many, many mm -hmm. people. I know I am addicted to my phone. Chelsea, if you could have just one album to listen to the rest of your life, just <laughs> one, what would it be? Oh, gosh, okay. Um, Sleeping at Last, that is a, a marvelous band, and their album is called Atlas Year One. It's just beautiful. Another band that I haven't heard of. I guess I need to have my game here. All my guests uh, throw people that I don't know. I was happy when uh, somebody said the Allman Brothers. I was like, all right, I know who that is. Chelsea, if you were, you're living in Southwest Virginia still. If you were not living in Southwest Virginia, where would you be living? I would really like to live in Asheville, North Carolina for a little bit. I've, you know, I've been in this area for so long, and it's, I think, a nice combination between a bigger city life and uh, that southern charm still. Great. And so, Chelsea, a couple more here on the speed round. If you could have a, a single night dinner with someone or an interview, anyone living or deceased, mm. who would that be? Alan Watts. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Watts. <laughs> okay. And uh, our last one for the speed round is, who would play the lead role in a movie about your life? Oh, my. We don't want you to pass on this one. Oh, gosh. I might have to, mainly because I'm not well-read in actors or actresses. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pass on that one. All right, all right. Well, you can answer that. I'm an original. Right. You're an original, right. You can play yourself on it. Oh, okay. Just, you well, never, let's do that. You never know, you never know where that's going to be. Uh, Chelsea, do you have a, a quote or a short message you'd like to share with everybody? Mm. Mm. Okay, well, I'll give you something that's just been really relevant for me lately. And I know you and I have actually had a conversation on the phone about this. There's this, this concept of, and this too. And this too. So anything that's coming up during your day that has totally just, you know, taken you for a ride, just pausing for a moment and experiencing, really experiencing, and this too. This is life. This is, I can accept this or I can fight it. And did you hear that anywhere specifically or did somebody kind of share that with you or did, how, tell us about that? Yeah, no, that was just a, a, a cumulative uh, response to my experience being away. So, you know, I, I thought that uh, I was going there to look for something that I didn't have, and it just continued to be, oh, okay, this thing that I have, this problem that I have, this emotion, this whatever my experience is right now is the lesson to deal with. 
Chelsea, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Again, uh, if you'd like to check out more about Chelsea, you can find her at It the Mindfulness Movement on Facebook. Yes. And what was the website again? ItMindfulnessMovement.com. Okay. And so you can check her out there. And uh, for on my personal side, she is teaching at Iron Mountain Endurance and Community Fitness in Damascus, and that is uh, in downtown Damascus. And your first class is free, so mm -hmm. if you want to check it out, it's on Wednesday nights at six six o'clock now. So come on out and see that. So Chelsea, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you for joining us today on the Neighborhood Well. This is your host Paul Godola, and I'm just reminding you that you deserve more love, not less.